One of the things you talked about is really your forte is images of women mm -hmm. um, in media. And, of course, hip-hop does fall within that. So would you talk a little bit about how the images of women in hip-hop have changed or have not changed from when they kind of got started, particularly with videos, um, as to how you see it represented now, which now we also have the Internet, and, of course, we mm -hmm. have magazines and we have blogs and this sort of thing. How have you seen it change or shift in any kind of way? Well, I... I I think that the sort of um, everyday afternoon kids coming home to watch videos has changed mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many other avenues, so many other images that are available to them. Sure. So, um, but do I see um, progress in the sense of th there's more sensitivity to the kind of shaping of images, the multidimensionality of what it means to be a, a, a woman in the industry? I don't necessarily see that as much as I would like. Mm -hmm. I think it's not as blatant anymore which is a good and a bad thing, because it doesn't necessarily signal that those attitudes and ideas have changed, but that people are a little bit more savvy in how they deliver them. Okay. okay. Um, what about self-representation? There's not a lot of women that are in a position of power to put out mm -hmm. um, their own, but for those that have, how are you seeing them representing themselves? I still think the images are, are highly sexual, and um, whenever I have these conversations, and you know, and I call particular names, people get upset and that kind of thing, and just go, "Oh no, that's my favorite." But I think uh, one of the things that being a critic of the genre does is it, it, it hopefully it forces the artist to really think about how can I move to the next level, how can I progress. But I still see an overt dependence on sexuality where women are concerned, and even though there are more women in the industry and more women who have. Um, the means to create the kinds sure. of things that we see, they still sort of acquiesce to this idea that sex sells and it's just so overwhelming. And um, I, I think that's a shame because hip hop is so is so much more richer than that. I mean, it's just such an incredibly rich genre, a rich history. There's so much more you can pull from. But I think sometimes people rely on what's easy because you know it's a fast money that kind of thing. When if you really think about what it would take to create these images that really show who people are and how they're involved in, in hip hop as a genre, I think it would be so much more incredible. So we were talking about images of women. So. Who's doing it positively? What women are out there producing positive images of women within the hip-hop or within media that, that you see and that you think or applaud as doing it well? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I am happy that there are more women involved in the industry in decision-making capacities. But I, I'm not so much interested, I think, in positive images, but just something that's multidimensional. For so long, we just see one aspect, uh, particularly of women of color or just women in general, and usually it's something that's highly sexualized. And so I think the important thing is to see a multidimensional representation, okay. to see a whole person sure. so that you know we're not into this sort of cookie cutter, this person doesn't have feelings or doesn't think, you know, that, that's the danger of those sort of one-dimensional, uh, you know, caricatures of womanhood. I have um, eight-year-old identical twin girls, and we're often invited to um, talk about whether they should be out there in some kind of way in the media. And the sexuality, even at their age, is the thing that most concerns me. Mm -hmm. And you're at Spelman, which is an all-female college, so what do you say when the young ladies tell you they have an opportunity to dance in a music video or they have an opportunity to do whatever within a music video. Just generally speaking, what's mm -hmm. your feedback to them about those kinds of situations or being invited to participate in those kind of arenas? Well, it's not a conversation that can take place in one sitting. I definitely think it's a conversation that you have to have over and over and over again. But one of the things I try to remind them about is um, sort of the legacy that they enter into when they come to uh, Spelman or any any college when they because they're assuming leadership positions and one of the things you have to think about is where are you leading you know your generation to so they need to to think through those things and also remember their history and where they come from and what I really concentrate on in my own teaching is make sure making sure that they understand the connections between archetypal images and the same thing that we see now so that when they say to me oh but I can make you know fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I really I have to ask the question, what is that worth and what is it costing you to do that? And so we have these kind of conversations a lot, you know, particularly in a city like Atlanta, where there are many, many opportunities to um, involve yourself, you know, at least visually in the right. genre. Um, but the thing that I try to do is build relationship and to really get them to think about the whole picture, not just what's going to happen in the next five minutes. Do you think they think enough about the longevity of the Internet because of... I'll say my age, maybe yours, 
you could go to a party, you could be, I don't know, videotaped, it probably got lost or whatever, but you could do many, many things and it would just go away. It would be in someone's memory, but it would just go away. Because of YouTube, because of our cell phones, because of the internet, because of blogs, many things you do do not go away. So that when you do decide later, you do not care to be a dancer anymore and you want to work at a major corporation or you want to work in an educational environment, these images of you are still mm -hmm. relevant. Do you think that they grasp that really? Not immediately. I mean, because, you know, because they've grown up in this kind of, you know, world of being inundated by images, and they look at one image, toss it aside, and keep moving to the next. So it's something you really have to reiterate, this idea that once you do something, once it's on camera, it's there forever. And so you really, and I always say, try to make sure your 18-year-old self doesn't do something your 36-year-old self can't handle. Right. You know, so just to really think through you know, how is this going to appear 20 years from now? What will this mean? You know, am, am I doing this because this is a long-term thing I want to get into, or is it just something fast I want to forget about it? So, yeah, you have to really talk about this longevity of these images. So tell us what you're working on next or now, whether it's relevant to this specific mm -hmm. topic or something else. And you also got a job change, so tell us a little bit about that, too. Oh, yeah, I have two things that I'm working on. I, I have a novel that's coming out in October. The e-book will come out in October, and then the um, hard copy is coming in November. Okay. And what's interesting about it is I, I really feel like it's a real Spellman project because oh. uh, the, the publisher is Tina McElroy Anza, who was class of yes. 71 at Spellman. Sure. And then the cover was done by a student who was in my very first class at Spellman. Her name oh. is Marta Sanchez, and she's an artist, and I called her and asked her what she'd do the cover for me and so I really feel like it was um, a real family affair sure. kind of thing so that everybody contributed. The name of the book? The name of the book is The Book of Ephesus. And can you tell us just a little bit of what it might Sure, be? it's um, I actually, uh, it's about a, um, a woman who is just everything in her community uh, and um, I, I, I really love um, biblical stories sure. and so I was reading The Book of Hosea which is a story okay. about the priest who marries a prostitute okay. to show, you know, sort of this metaphor of God's love for his people and I started thinking about that and I thought, how would that work today if this really incredible, well thought up person, you know, marries somebody who the community thinks is beneath them. Sure. And then I thought it would be even better if the priest was a woman. So, uh, oh, yeah, so she, um, so it's, it's a love story. Okay. So Very I think nice. We'll like look forward to um, reading that, and certainly mm -hmm. I'll make sure that the library acquires a copy. Okay. What's the second? The second thing I'm really excited about, I had an opportunity to meet with people from the American Psychological Association, okay. and they have a healthy images campaign that they're doing, okay. and so um, I, I thought that it would be great. They needed people to do, they wanted public service announcements, sure. and I thought it would be great if my film class could do that. So this fall, my film class are going to be doing a series of public uh, service announcements for middle, elementary, and high school students Wonderful. on images, and then they'll get sent out to PTA meetings and that kind of thing. Okay. Now, did you figure out how to get Michelle Obama to come <laughs> and do the um, Let's Move video and all of that? Here? Not yet. I'm okay. working on it. Though. Well, um... I spent last year um, on sabbatical at Duke University and uh, working on a completely new project. I have always loved speculative fiction. Okay. And so, oh, um, okay. yeah, so I wanted to really, really think about speculative fiction and think sure. about where I wanted it to go. And what's so incredible is that it actually brought me back to my, my work on images. So I'm looking at Octavia Butler. Absolutely. And um, when I look at her work and the kinds of images, particularly of young black women that she creates, right. um, I think it's so incredibly interesting. And so, you know, sort of the next work I'm doing is to looking at uh, images of black women in speculative fiction and um, you know what kinds of signals do they give us and, and I, I think they provide quite a few answers and um, that perhaps we haven't looked at that genre as something that we need to take as seriously. Good. I like speculative fiction. I was slow to come to it and I don't know there may be other folks that may not really know what that is so would you just say a little bit about what it is specifically and maybe name other authors because maybe there are folks that have read it and don't realize that they've read it. Sure, speculative fiction, most people would think of science fiction, but speculative fiction is simply that sort of a huge umbrella that covers all the genres. So it would be sci-fi, it would be horror, it would be fantasy, um, you know, sort of all of those things that speculate about a different reality. Right. So, um, and, uh, and I think that, um, of course, my favorite author is, is Octavia Butler, but there are many people who are working in the tradition. And what I found that was so important in my research is that, particularly in the African-American tradition, speculative fiction has been 
uh, since the beginning, at the forefront. I mean, mm -hmm. W.B. Du Bois, George Schuyler, there were people who were writing speculative fiction all along. And it's really important, I think, uh, when you think about the African-American tradition, because I think that speculative fiction was the first place people dreamed themselves free, that it became mm -hmm. this sort of blueprint mm -hmm. for how they were going sure. to work that out in reality. So this would also include Jewel Gomez mm -hmm. and um, yes. um, Du. Yes, Tananari Du, who's, who's teaching at Spelman this right, year. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. right, which yeah. is a real coup for um, Spelman. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of folks that fall mm -hmm. into this particular area. Yeah. Um, I t there's one particular book, Octavia Butler, that I read. The woman was in slavery, and because she could time travel, Kendra. yes, mm -hmm. yeah. she could take herself out of slavery. And so, like you said, she dreamed herself free. Mm -hmm. um, also, Mama Day, to mm -hmm. me, fits Gloria that. Naylor's, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Gloria Naylor's yeah. book fits that genre. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you have a position change. You've changed positions. Yes. You're still with Spelman, and we're happy you came back from Duke. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing this year that's different than what you were doing before you went away on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Well, I am the chair of the English department, and what's different about that um, is really everything. <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm really used to going to my office and closing my door and, and you know, just sort of going into my world, but you have to be completely available to everybody at all times. Uh, that's one new thing about being chair of the English department, but I'm excited about it too because I, I get to be in that position at a time when we're getting ready to reevaluate the major, to look at our, our program, compare it to all the others, you know, that, uh, that, um, that are comparable and, and really look at where we are and where we need to go to sort of make sure we're providing that sort of cutting edge uh, education for our students in the 21st century. So, last question, what are you reading? What, well, you might not have any time right now, mm -hmm. but maybe this summer before you made your official transition, what were you reading or what mm -hmm. are you liking right now? What would you throw out as a suggestion for um, casual or recreational reading? Well, I actually found a, a speculative fiction writer brand new. Her name is Nidi Okorafor, and she is a Nigerian-American writer. And what's fascinating about her work is that she's writing in that speculative genre, but her heroes are all African girls. Okay. And, uh, and she writes about a post-apocalyptic world and okay. what happens to Africa, you know, in the face of a nuclear war and, and these young women that she sort of poises to help lead their people, you know, in, in the face of all of this destruction. So I've just fallen in love with her and, and just reading absolutely everything I can by okay. her. So Well, we'll make sure that we have that. We want to thank you so much for taking oh, the time out of your new busy schedule <laughs> to be here with us. And um, we look forward to the next works that you do and having you come back again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.